What up Buttercup, we are in for a new tutorial. So previously I showed you how to layer your video tracks in terms of going, okay, well there we go, we've got our um, graphic for our lower third, and then we put our text on top, and then we've got our B-roll sitting up the top there. Now, I'm being incredibly lazy on this project, that's because it's a quick turnaround, and it's only a short little clip, it's like a, um, you know, three, four minute clip, so I don't really need to do too much in terms of my planning and preparation. However, if you're shooting a project and it's going for a longer form, like could be going for half an hour or something like that, then you're probably going to want to start playing with these tracks a little bit differently. Okay, and it's really simple to do. As you saw down in the audio tracks, we can change the color of these tracks. We can do the same with the video tracks as well. We can change the colors there. But what I'm going to show you is one other thing. Okay, it's really small and it's really simple. Okay, and that is I'm going to show you how to rename your tracks. Okay. So we've got V5 up here, and that's where my subtitles are going to be. So I'm going to call it subs. So I'm going to right click on V5, and I'm just going to click quickly go down to rename track. And in here, I'm going to just going to call it sub. And as you can see, when I click OK on that, it is now created V5 slash subs. Okay, so that will now tell me that that's the subtitles track really helpful if you've got um, effects heavy content where you've got layers of video effects sitting on top of each other it's also really helpful if you're shooting long form documentaries um, or you know long form feature films as well but um, long form doc documentaries in particular because you may have um, different layers for different environments and things like that so you can manage it a lot easier so that's just a quick little tutorial to show you how to rename your tracks okay one last little quick thing is this little button running along the side here. That's that's the power button. So what's it mean? It's got a little power button there. What does it mean? Why do we need power? Okay, so what that's doing is it means that I can switch off that video track. So the tracks above it will still work. So if I wanted to look at a very specific thing, and um, let's go back down to one of the older tracks where we've got that uh, interview in here. Where Yep, there we go. So this track here. So that's really helpful if you're looking for an effect or something that's just not doing what it's supposed to be doing. You can turn the power off on that effect and it doesn't compromise the stuff above it. So you can still see what's going on above, but you're just able to turn off the effects tracks below. Okay, so just a really helpful little tool. Look what happens when I turn off the bottom track. We now have a black silhouette because as I said in the last tutorial, we cut it out and we doubled up that shot there. So that is the power of these power buttons on the side here, the power of the power buttons. And the other thing that I was showing you was of course the renaming of the um, video tracks so you can sort of rename them and stuff. This little grey area here is a void, there's nothing really going on in here. In terms of Avid Media Composer, we've got these little tabs in here, there are track effects. So as you can see, I've got an equalizer in here, and I've also got a dynamic compressor in here. So they're my little sort of track effects sitting in there. I can toggle on and off my waveforms, or I should be able to, but they're staying on. So, oh, I think it's because I've got them turned on in general in my timeline settings here, okay? So if I was to go um, turn my waveforms off, none. But if I turn these ones on, I can now see those waveforms. Um, look, I totally understand why you would use this setting and not just generally turning your waveforms on. And what I mean by that is, when you're editing away and you're like, oh, there's that audio sound that's just in there and I think there's another one that's better, you can actually go down and say, okay, well, if you have your waveforms on, it's kind of difficult to actually read the text that's sitting below it that tells you what that clip is. But if we turn our waveforms off, I can now clearly see what that clip is, so I can search for it in the timeline. So that's what that little benefit is there. This next one is for um, changing the volume in terms of gaining the clip and panning the clip in terms of audio volumes there. Look, to be honest, I hardly ever use it. And the reason why I hardly ever use it is because I do love the power and the strength of the equalization and the dynamic compressor, okay? Something that you really need to take into consideration when you're working with audio. The power that these tools have for your editing program. As I've said before, it doesn't matter what editing program you're on, these tools are in there. Equalizer and compressor. Okay? 
They're named slightly different in Premiere. It's equalizer and compressor or seven band equalizer or something like that. In Avid, it is equalizer and dynamic compressor. And the reason why Avid calls it dynamic compressor is because they are way smarter than Premiere. And with that, I'm going to stop.